G'day folks and thanks for joining us again on Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures. Sit back and relax, I hope you enjoy the show. Fantastic. Wagons, ho! Oh, oh. Thank your mother for the rabbits. Just when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, it's not a Bang! <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. Yeah, big fella. That's it. That's it, big fella. Just there. That's it. Well, thank you very much. That was easy. We might actually take the seatbelt off, folks. I can tell you now. This is Holland's Landing. Holland's couldn't be with us today. I think he died about 150 years ago. But we've got Ian Pochran, who, together with myself, we've had some fair days here, Pockers. Never come empty-handed away from this place. McClellan Straits is the name of the waterway. It joins Lake Wellington and Lake Victoria in Victoria's East Gippsland district, so you don't have to look at the map. Apparently there's a few brim here. Bushy was here a fortnight ago and said it was OK. And if it's not today, Bushy, leave town. Let's go fishing, mate. Got the bungs in, mate? Uh, the bungs are in, mate. Oh, good, mate. The bungs are in. I might just get that off, it's all right. Yeah, that's OK. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Yes. Yeah, we're on here. You take it well? Yeah. Hey, small fish though, I think, Rex. Oh, it's a good start. Uh, but yeah, well, we've got we're on the middle of the tide change, so. Yeah, I reckon once you haven't got any movement, just look at him. Little fella. Oh, he swallowed the hook and he's well under 26 <laughs> centimetres. So the best thing there to do, folks, is not go down looking for a five or a six cent hook is just to nip it off with Fat Phil's pliers, give it a kiss and put it back. Now what Ian will do is just simply tie on another hook, that fish lives and we go on fishing. Ian just mentioned we're in the middle of a tide change and that's why it's a little bit slow at the minute. What you'll find is the smaller fish like that one there will start picking. But as soon as the tide starts to run towards Harry's camera from where I am, we're expecting a little bit of action. This is a proven brim area, and, well, without being smart, you can tell a brim fisherman by the size of his rod. Now, don't ride in. Brim fishermen who are fair dinkum have big, long rods, and that is the way to catch brim. Big, whippy, long rods with light tips, and you can miss them just like I can. <laughs> Do we have to put that in? Thank you. 
to turn now the tired wrecks and there could be a bit of action I reckon. I tell you what isn't a sensational area where it'd be quite choppy out on the lakes today and oh, you get yeah. beautiful craft like this like this coming up. Have a look at that. Did you see that? Yes I he did. swam against the tide. He's this on. big long rod will pull him from under the camera boat. I don't think his size do you think? Oh I don't know these days. No, oh, no, he's not. No, he's not. But that's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, but it is a good sign. That, see, they've got very, very good breeding seasons down here. The, the fisheries thought they might have lost a couple of year classes, and they reckon it's more due uh, to the lack of rain up in the catchment areas. Uh -huh. How old is he? Well, uh, a size brim is, a, is, you know, seven or eight years of age. He could be four or five years of, of age. It's amazing. So, isn't it fantastic to see marvellous old craft coming up here? Good on you, mate. <laughs> I tell you what, Ian, I have never ever known it as tough as this. This is tough. But I yeah. reckon by having those few extra worms on the hook, if you get a bite and they get a small piece of worm, you only got a small piece on, she's all over. But if you've got a nice bunch of worms, you've got a chance of the fish coming back. Got a chance of fish coming back. I just had a bit of a touch on that particular rod. They're not actually dragging them over the back of the boat, are they? Well, that, we've got a falling barometer. That's what we've got. Oh, we've got a falling yeah. barometer. We've got a falling television show here because I can't. I can't. Nah, hook a fish. Gee, it's tough. Rex, you got a fish on? That one? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tell you what, Ian, brim are never easy, except, you know, if you land on a school. Yeah. But they're never this tough either, This are is they? the toughest I've seen it. That's got a bit of weight, has it? So I tell you what, this might be a size one for you. But we don't mind taking them. We can take 10 each if we want to. We can take 20 home. We don't want to take 20 home, but we might take half a dozen if we get a few going. Look at the kick going through that rod and that's what it's all about a big giant shock absorber I tell you what unless he's laying on his side he, oh he's going to be a fish that we can take home Ian he's going to be 26 centimetres well I'll be doing Chinese brim with that Chinese brim Chinese brim well how about that I'll just double check but I'm pretty certain that that is going to come up okay and there you are yep 28 and a quarter centimetres a Gippsland brim I tell you what, now it's up to you to catch one because I got my feed. What about you? I'm trying, Rex, I really am. And you told me to use the prawn. Well, one thing I can agree with, folks, you're certainly trying. Look at the weather. Yeah. Is your name Horace Greeley? Go west. Just a tiny bit of a touch, but. Poor oh, gee, folks, just because it's tiny and it's just sort of a little bit of a dribble or a nibble. Doesn't mean that it's not a nice fish because some fish can really put you off. I say at a lot of the shows I do, particularly Melbourne and Sydney fishing shows, that so many people when they get a nibble, all they want to do is strike and they're just pulling the line and the whole gear away from the fish. Now this is not a very, very big fish at all. It's a typical Gippsland brim. And I'm not that disappointed that they're not big brim. We'll get a feed today, there's no doubt about it. But what I am pleased about is these become next year's fish and that's what the future fish concept is all about, that we have fish for the future. And I was really worried when we missed those couple of year classes, I can tell you now, the Gippsland Lake seems to be in reasonable condition. We've just got to get a nice balance. We've got 10 fish per day limit on us with a 26 centimetres uh, limit for the length. 
I'd just like to see the pros ease up a little bit without taking everyone that they get. You got one, Ian? Yeah, I have. Good boy. You did okay then. Right on cue, Ian. What do you think? Uh, I think we've still just got a fish that's just below below the limit. Do you really? Yeah. Just lift it in here. Well, I'm, actually, he's a very, very skinny brim, that one. He's almost like a bass, isn't he? Yeah. Look, he's got a concave stomach. And gee, I tell you what, I'd give a lot of money to have a concave yeah. stomach. You reckon I've got any chance of it? You've got a slab, not a six pack, mate. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've got a quarter pounder and you've got a junior burger. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, I'm just going to put this over the scale. He's going to go back. I'll put him over the scale. And believe it or not, he's 27 centimetres, so he's a size fish. But because he's in such poor condition and he's got no roof over the tool shed, he's going back. I think so. Ian, can you do me a favour? What would you like? Just leave the smart stuff to me. <laughs> I'm lost for words. You're lost for words. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
And you can see in there, there's some really fierce teeth. They don't look all that impressive, but that could just about take my finger off if I let my finger get in his mouth. Well, that's a fantastic start. I just hope we can get a couple more. Kieran's put us right on the spot. OK, we'll let him go. I'll get out of his mouth. Take him for a swim. I'm not going to kiss this one. Even if I was Rexy, I don't think he would either. There you go. Kieran's brought me down here to hunt Taylor, but uh, on the way I found something else. Have a go at that. What a beautifully coloured crab. I've got absolutely no idea what species of crab it is, but what a magnificent looking thing. It's got those black eyes, one big claw, and uh, it's just a really trendy looking crab. So I'll stick him back on the sand and we'll watch him scuttle away, but there's just so much life in these areas. People don't get to visit here very often, so there's just all sorts of wildlife. It's a beauty. I'll just put him back and he'll probably run away. He'll be happy. There he goes. <laughs> Whoops! Kieran, how big's that one? Oh, just a little tailor, I think, but there's something happening out there. There's a few more there. It's about time you pulled your weight. You've been catching these coddy things and wrasses and God knows what. Yeah, I'm going to bang one out there as well, because I might get lucky too. There he comes, just in the end. Oh, he's off. He's there. Fair hook in there. You can just take your time. Is that a tailor? It's not a mackerel, is it? No, it's no, a little tailor. It's a tailor. Beautiful. Now, notice, folks, he's a great guy too because he didn't catch one as big as the punter. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's good sense from your guide. Well done, Kieran. Nice little one. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay, that's probably more a common size that you get in those places. Yep. Just watch out, he yeah, does yeah. a hook here. Whoops. It's a lively one. Alright. Now I'll just wriggle that out and you can drop him back in. Beautiful. Back in. There he goes. There he goes. Straight through Harry's legs. I was just retrieving that little muley, which is the bait fish along the top. And have a look at this thing going. This is a serious tailor for a little rod. Oh, Kieran, I don't know what you brought me here for. Fish are a bit big for Bushy. Well, he's right out there and still going. Come on, fish. Yeah, thing is, just got to persevere a bit here. I've only got the light rod. The light rod, fairly light gel spun line, but we've got enough of it. Still got plenty on the spool, so we don't have to worry yet. Any luck, he'll stop and we can start to get him back. I think he's a tailor because he made a big splash when he got on. Oh, come on, fish. Most important thing is not to worry too much when your line starts to disappear. Most people like the fish to come in towards the sack and not out towards the ocean, but it's just a bit of a waiting game. If we try to pull him up too quickly, we might break that line. Yeah, I'm on. OK, Kieran. Yes, they're on as well. Yeah, got one here. This is a hot spot. You can just walk down here straight on the sand. Yeah. Uh, what have oh, I got? What have you got? Just some little reef fish. Ah. Now that is not what we're after. <laughs> no. You keep catching those, Kieran. That's really good. I'll take care of these ones. What size tailor have you caught down here, Kieran? Oh, up to about three and a half kilos. Three and a half kilos. That's a good tailor. I think we might be going to you see one of those any minute. You might beat that. I'll just come down here. You better come down, folks, and follow me. Just go along the beach. <laughs> yeah, still got plenty of toe in him. Oh. oh, look at the size of that. Oh. That is a serious tailor. A little rod. Come on. Oh. Oh, that is a serious fish. Have a go at that. A light rod. Oh. Now, this is the part where you can't panic. You just got to slide him up with that little bit of wave. Oh, look at that. 
Yes! That's a ripper. That is a tail of Kieran. Look at that. Don't let him bite you. Have a look at that. I think that's beating our record here. That is a huge tail of just off a sandy little beach. It's a light rod. I'm stoked, Kieran. You can bring me here anytime. Do a car talk island. If you want a big tail of this is the place. Now, if I give you the pliers, Kieran, yep. I reckon you could do the honors and get the hook out because we'll let him go. Just carefully doesn't flick and get a hook in you. Oh. There we go. Okay, I'll just. He might flick and get away, but we want to let him go anyway. Can you just yeah. hold my rod? Grab Thanks, rod. Kieran. Now, yeah, we'll just put him in the water so he can get a bit of clean water through his gills. Okay. Make sure he's, make sure he's fit. He's fit, all right. He's gone. Oh, well, that is a real buzz. Kieran. Not bad, Bushy, not bad. New champion. That is fantastic. And Thurkartog Island, there's just so many fish here. You could bring just about anyone down to this beach or any of the rocks around here and you're quite likely to catch big fish like that. Definitely. And good for the young kids. Easy to fish off the beach here. That's very true. It's nice and safe along the beach here and uh, there's no shortage of fish. In fact, I think I might put another pilly on. What do you reckon? Yes, let's do it. What a beautiful looking Look at structure. This. Look at this again. <laughs> now listen folks, we continue our trek through this marvellous part of the country. This is Lake Sinclair and part of the World Heritage Wilderness Area of Tasmania. It's very special. By the way, don't ever, ever say anything about Melbourne weather, you Taswegians. If you want another day, just wait ten minutes. Kenny Orr's here with me. I tell you what, Ken, you love this part of the country. I tell you what, it's... Uh, it's your home territory, isn't it? Is. Yeah, I mean, this, this is where I live. This is this is the prettiest lake in this in this whole state. You've been all over the world with your lovely wife Maria. Yep. Where's the best place in the world? Tasmania, absolutely. Without doubt, this is the best place to be. And you mean that, don't you? With all my heart, yeah. A man with a bit of passion, folks, about his hometown. Just like the old bearded burbler, folks. We're going to do a bit of uh, trolling on Lake Sinclair. Bushy's given me some new till lures. We've got the old gear. And folks, come along. This is a relaxing part of the shoot. I'm looking forward to it. Let's go, Ken. Let's do it. Interesting building, Kenny, isn't it? One point two Beautiful. million dollars, I think it was. Yeah, thank you. Folks, it's pretty obvious it's not summer here. I haven't got my G-string on and a can of Coke sitting on the beach looking at the seagulls. But you can probably hear the hum in the back of Jackie's audio that we've got a huge wind from the southwest and we're just surrounded by clouds, a bit of snow on the mountain over there. But it's not really conducive to trolling. Trolling have a nice calm area to be able to work deep drop-offs and that sort of thing. And around the corner, I tell you what, Midge Farrell, he should be getting out the surfboard because the surf around there, mate, is real tough stuff. However, Ken and I have decided to come in here at the express uh, suggestion of uh, Daxi. Of course, that's Richard Dax, who's our proprietor here at Lake Sinclair. And we're going to do a bit of drift spinning. Now, that is exactly what it is, drift spinning. With, this, with the aid of the canopy, we get the wind coming across us and we gently go along at around about a knot, a knot and a half, which for you people at home is around about two and a half kilometres that we're moving. And we come over new parts of the ground. So instead of fishing in a, a stationary spot near a river and the river's going past and the fish are coming up, we're going with the river, as in this case a drift, and we're going past the fish. This is one of my favourite lures. If somebody said I could have one lure to catch a trout anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, this would be it, a gold tylo. This is one of my favourites. It's got a bend in halfway down the tail, and all you have to do is wind at various speeds, and it'll dart, and it'll go down, it'll dart and go down. If you need to get down in one of the deeper areas out past this little bit of shrubbery here, you use this little Rapala. One of my favourite patterns is the redfin pattern. It's got a little bib on it, that forces the water when it's retrieved to take the lure down. So there you are, folks. I'm all set. Drift spinning, as you'll see with Ken and I. Still a relaxing way to go, but you just have to make adjustments for these conditions, which are getting worse. I tell you what, Sir Edmund Hillary, I reckon he'd have his beanie on here today, folks. We'll see how we go.
<laughs> Isn't that just fantastic? I've got to do a bit of work here, folks. There's a lot of weed in here in this particular area. And this fish has grabbed this. This is a nice fish. This is a beautiful brown trout of Lake St. Clair. I tell you what, Kenny, look at the colours oh, of that what fish. A he looks like he's a four pounder if I he's an ounce. What, he's a very, very nice fish, isn't he? Oh, what a beautiful. This, this folks, is just sensational. This is Tasmania at its very, very best. This is a lovely fish, and for our young players at home, the line's gone through his gills, so I'll just try and get that away. And as he starts his roll now, I could lose him because he can get tail wrapped and then he can spin. But I tell you what, if you ever want a better uh, example of what Tasmania's trout is all about, now I'm going to try and take a leaf out of Kenny Orr's book and pick the fish up like that. Now that's the way that he's going to remain calm. But let me tell you that you will not anywhere in the world see a better example of colour in a fish. Now this fish is a little bit lean. He's a male because of the locked jaw up here, but that is a fantastic example of Tasmanian trout as it, at its best. And I'll tell you what, he's taken that lure. He just hasn't been hooked in the uh, jaw, Ken. He has just grabbed that lure down, down there. The and yeah. I'll tell you what, I might see if I've got a pair of pliers or something like that, or I might be able to just pop my finger in there and get it out if I can. I'd rather the... There we go. And whoop, there we go. And Harry, 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 Harry. He's magnificent. <laughs> A fantastic Tasmanian trout. And Ken, people come from all over the world for these magnificent adversary, and they are, aren't they? Sure are. I mean, they're probably the purest strain of wild brown trout left anywhere in the world. I mean, they haven't, uh, they don't stock them, they're just naturally bred and have been for 150 years. It's a fantastic story, folks. Yeah, it's a but beauty. Tasmania's not a natural place for these fish, but now, Tasmania. New Zealand, Argentina are more natural for these fish than where they first come from. Them, that's right, they are. And We're going to put him back, folks. This is just, I tell you what, I always get emotional. Probably not emotional, but I always get really serious because there's nothing better than this when you're an angler. To be able to come to this environment, knock one of these fish on the head, let him go to fight another day. And that's what I'm on about, folks. And I tell you what, and look at that. And folks, a few of you who follow my show might have heard me say the little polar bear said to his mother, am I a real polar bear? Why is that, son? How come I'm always cold, Mum? I'm always cold. I know how you feel, son. Up here, it's pretty cold. Well, Bushy and I are about to start doing one of our favourite forms of fishing, and that's moving along slowly with the bow-mounted electric motor, casting lures on light single-handed tackle. We're at Lake Glenbourne in the Hunter Valley, west of Newcastle, and that's Barrington Tops up there behind us. Bushy, last time I brought you up here, you did pretty well on bait, I seem to remember. Yeah, I got a good caddy, so I'd like to repeat the dose with a big bass.
right bushy straight away. First bait in the water. Yeah. He's got it, I think he's no. oh, no. Yeah, yes. he's got it. <laughs> what is it? Same oh, one. silver perch. Look at that. Ah! Yeah. Well, that didn't take long, folks. All the lure casting we've been doing. First bait over the side, a little silver perch. Hopefully, a sign of things to come. Let's see if he's got any big mates down there. He's a Better. good fish. That's more like it, Steve. Oh, he's a good <laughs> fish. Oh. Oh. Gee whiz. Oh, oh he's a good guy. Gotta be a big caddy, I'd say, the way it's going. Pulling hard. Oh, it might be a might be a gold. I don't know. Oh, oh. What? what? It's a it's big, a big caddy. caddy. Where's Look that at the net? Size of that. Where's that net? <laughs> Bushy, this might be the one you caught when we were here about six months ago. Uh, he's probably growing that bigger, much. I think. Well, he's probably oh, growing a bit. Similar. Thanks, mate. Oh! Well, there you go. Similar just goes size. to show, doesn't it, mate? We could have spent the rest of our lives throwing lures, I think, and not caught a fish. They're just not on the job on lures at the moment. But as soon as we came in here and started bait fishing, look how fat he is, Bushy. Look at that. Just hold the net under him in case he oh, falls off. I'm holding. <laughs> I'm going to grab that hook out with the pliers. I'll just get hold of him here behind the spikes first. Look at that, yeah. what a ripper. Boy, oh, you'd get a couple of good fillets off him. I think we'll put him back there. Oh, you reckon they are that good to eat? Well, they're pretty good. You've never tried them, have I've you, Bushy? I've never eaten them. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll take this bloke home and I'll cook him up for you. All right. I'll drop him back That's in the net. Pretty good to me. There we go. You can't complain about a day that uh, starts off with a lot of lure casting and finishes up with a nice fish to take home and eat. And there's definitely a lesson in that. Don't stick with one technique if it's not working. If you're a fly fisherman, we all love fly fishing. Sometimes it doesn't work. If you enjoy your lure fishing, sometimes that doesn't work either. Don't be uh, too proud to go back to the old live bait. The humble earthworm, eh, Bushy? Let's put another humble earthworm on Let's and do see it. if we can get another couple of fillets. right in the block hole, you might catch a barra. Sounds all right to me, mate. Half three, fourth of capital in Victoria, mate, into the breeze. I need yeah. to just allow for the wind. If I can be have the, the pointy end that way yep. so I can cast okay. with my right hand into the wind, I reckon we're going to do all right. Let's see what it looks like when we get up there. We can position ourselves nicely with these oars. It's all right to me. Up into that corner there. Right. A good example here, folks, is that Greg is rowing into this snag. Now, I hope by a little bit of a demonstration, I'm going to show you that these fish, you don't have to disturb them if you get caught up in the old foliage. But if you're not getting caught up in the foliage, you're not getting close enough to where the barramundi are. So every time I get snagged, I think, well, at least I'm in where they should be. And there's a barramundi there right there. Yo, beauty, little barra. Yeah, didn't he grab that, eh? Didn't he grab Woo. that? And he, didn't he grab me too? Well, <laughs> barramundi's one wrecks nothing. <laughs> As Greg says, one nil. And that's why we come back, because if you caught everyone, well, it wouldn't be as much fun. Just a little bit of persistence, trying to get underneath there where the barra should be. It's no good being out here where the fish ain't, as Jack Dye would say. It's no good being where the footy ain't if you want to kick. So that's given me a nice old little bit of incentive to go back and win the next one, folks. Try one. 
up down there. Well, have a look at that. That's a box jellyfish. Well, Darwin people might know them as marine stingers. They are the scourge of the northern waters and have taken many, many lives, particularly young lives, on Bathurst and Melville Island, where the young Aborigine people swimming get laced across the top of the chest. That's why all the charter people have vinegar on board to sort of counteract the sting. The best thing is leave them alone. Do a Harry Butler. Mmm, pretty looking thing. The packet of dynamite. Look at them. Look at them on it. Yes, yes. Nice one, Rex. I teased him into it, Greg. That slower retrieve. Yeah. What did it? I teased him into it, Greg. A slower retrieve. Now that's a serious barramundi on fly. I reckon. I know they catch bigger ones, but look, look at the barra behind him. Yeah. Look at the barra behind him. Just thinking there might be something there to eat. Look at him. Look at his mate. Come on there, mate. Well, aren't they just glorious fish, these big that salties, eh? Look at them. Too. Look at the barramundi wow. behind him. Well, they're obviously doing their thing here, all right. The breeding is going very, very nicely. Beautiful example of a northern territory. Top end. New Guinea, wherever barramundi are, a beautiful example of a saltwater barra. Now, just relax, son. Pick it up there. Just relax, baby. I'll have to be pretty, pretty good to get the fly out of there. Look at that in there. Look at that. The fly is right in there. And fortunately, with barbless Bethune, it should be just a matter of pushing that down and bringing the fly out. Look at that. Barramundi. And something's had a go at him there, probably like a shark or something like that, or a wahoo has had a go at him and it's just starting to heal in his natural environment. And that's what this joint's all about. This natural environment. Come on, mate. You're gonna go for me. He's as good as the moment I caught him. Talking about the environment, not a lot here. One thing that does concern me is the amount of litter that is strewn along the beaches from people who don't give a stuff about the world, just throwing things willy-nilly overboard in this magnificent gulf of Carpentaria and in fact, the oceans of the world. If you look after the environment and give the fish the right setup and the makeup, they'll be here for our kids. Future fish is my catch cry, and that's what this show's all about. Here he is behind it. Look at this, yep, Greg. Yep, yep. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, gee. What's wrong with him? Come on, now strip, strip. Strip, roll on it, roll on it, roll on it, roll on it, roll on it. They're just playing with me. Look, look. Oh, oh, come on. He, he's got it. <laughs> I saw the flash. I thought it was a queenie behind him. I thought I'm going to just give us a bit of a go, and he went bang. <laughs> oh, gee, Willikins. Look at that. Now, you know, a lot of trout fishermen folks sort of say, oh, there's nothing like trout fishing with a fly. Well, I tell you what, there's nothing like fly fishing up here in the tropics for barramundi and queenfish, various other species, GTs. Look at that. Beautiful little barramundi. A predator right from conception. Now, I might actually do the comfort lift here and just uh, show people just how placid and docile these little fish can be. But look, he's a beautiful little salty. If you've got one of these fish up the back in one of the streams or one of the billabongs, that'd be as black as black. But 
Look at that. Now, oh, wacky do. I reckon that is just a beautiful example of a barramundi up here. Look at you, hey? Come on, mate, I don't want to hurt you. He might have heard about me. And look at those nocturnal eyes, and even in the middle of the day here. Just fantastic. Come on, mate. Just a perfect, perfect fish. Look at that, the fly just fell out. But beautiful, beautiful barramundi. Come on, mate. I'll just grab you on my upper lip, and I won't give him a kiss, and that's it. Wow, how about that? Well, folks, just let me tell you how hard we've worked for these fish today. We've got a couple of jinxes on board called the Dickinson Brothers. Bushy's moustache actually fell hot, fell out of the boat, it was that hot. And Greg Bethune, he's a dud. No, seriously, folks, things haven't gone well here for two days. You've got no idea the smiles on the crew's face as the old fellow with the beard has just gone bang. Thank your mother for the rabbits. Pretty special place, just don't worry about that.